Crossroads Media. What is going on, everybody? Welcome on into Sports Talk with Broads. So the Flyers deadline is now complete. There were a few things made here on Friday after the whole Sean Walker stuff happened about a day ago or so. And fine stuff, for sure. I have two different views on this. I have the personal opinion angle. And then I also have the, I'm going to grade you on a curve based off of how you tried telling the fan base you weren't going to move off of your ideas of a rebuild. And then in my opinion, and I'll explain to you why I feel this way, but I think they did move from their initial point that they wanted to stress all season long. And yeah, the the standings dictated them to shift. And maybe you can make the argument that that's the right thing to do. Fine. I'm not even against that because I like them winning. I'm rooting for them. I want them to do very, very well. And there's a reason why I send out the Stanley Cup GIF after every single win, including a greasy, dirty one down in Florida where you pot a late goal in the third period, barely any time left on the clock. You steal one half away. Ew. How about the first goal? Are you serious? Cam York in the neutral zone. Beautiful moves. Sends a pass to Paling, who just rips it as he goes to the net hard. Outstanding W against a very sharp team. So just an awesome example of this team not going down without a fight. And part of the reasons why I said, even though it scares you to look at some of these tough opponents coming up during the stretch, the Flyers are good and are capable of beating these good opponents. So don't just write all of them off as losses and then write all the games that the Islanders are playing coming up here as wins because that's totally unfair to the fellas. Now with that, I'll tell you my personal opinion first on it. I think Danny Briere has done a tremendous job, and, you know, the Sean Walker thing falls on his lap, and everybody with the pulse would trade Sean Walker for a first-round pick due to the circumstances. So, not that I'm taking any sort of uh, acknowledgement off of Danny Briere's plate here. He hit the button and said, yes, let's move forward with it. But that's a no-brainer. Where I give Danny Briere a ton of credit is an area that we don't really see that much here in hockey town, all right? Not the hockey team. The, the football team, yeah. The Philadelphia Eagles, yeah. Howie Roseman, yeah. So if I'm saying that Danny Briere has a skill set that reminds me of Howie Roseman, then that's pretty damn important to highlight. And he's very savvy getting back some of these picks, fifth round pick, fourth round pick, taking money, salary cap, utilizing it to your advantage. Let's be a third party in this trade so we can gain something back in return. Hey, we applied a fifth rounder in this trade, but if we do this, we can get a fifth rounder back. So we're kind of getting it back in return. All that good stuff. That's just the forward thinking and the savviness of Danny Briere from sort of an overhead view that I think really separates him from a lot of the guys that were in power previously in this franchise, and I think that will pay off dividends big time down the road. I think that Danny Briere did a good job. He did a good mix of keeping what's here during this little run and while giving up a player like Sean Walker for extremely high value. I don't think he did a bad job. I don't think he blew up the franchise down the road, even with a Nick Sealer contract, even though I don't prefer the Nick Sealer contract because third-pairing guys grow on trees. Nick Sealer's not a top-four defenseman, regardless on what he's done this year, just like Sean Walker's not what he was this season. You can find and replace third-pair defensemen like this with a snap of your fingers, and if you can, you have the wrong person in place at the top, and I think Danny Briere can find those guys all over the place, so if you can gain an asset during a rebuild, and you can easily replace a third pair defenseman, then what are we doing here, right? And that's where I have this internal battle on the whole, how do I view it when I'm looking through the goggles of, okay, I'm strictly looking at your plan. So I'm judging you based off of your plan. This is what you told me you were going to do. I'm now going to grade you on what you said you were going to do. And I, I, I think they got moved a little bit. I do. I think they got moved and fell in love with certain character. And I was told they were not going to do that. John Tortorella, strictly from his mouth, stated, we can't fall in love with guys. You fell in love with Nick Sealer. 
you fell in love with Scott Lawton. I'm aware that Jake Genschel didn't go for the craziest thing in the world. Well, the market this, the market that. Here's the thing. Here's my issue with Scott Lawton. Deep down, I know. They didn't want to get rid of him. So they didn't want to because they fell in love with what he means to the room and what he means to be a flyer. I just know that they've gotten themselves in trouble over the last 20, 30, 40 years by really sticking to, hey, we like this guy because he represents the flyers. The more you do that, the more of the typical Flyers hockey we get. Scott Lawton isn't very good. He's not very good. He's not bad. He's not atrocious. But you told me you were gearing up to build sustained success and you were going to try to find ways to rebuild this. Well, getting rid of Scott Lawton pushes you forward into that. It, It helps you more trading Scott Lawton than it does keeping Scott Lawton, even with this current contract and all. Now, he's not as bad as he played earlier in the season where he was actually hurting the team. I don't think he hurt the team. I don't think he makes the team insane either. I think he's fine. But if you're rebuilding as you say you are and you have a fine player, well, you move that pla- you move that player. So I'm sort of in a weird space here because my personal view is I want to go win a cup. I want to go compete, but I I don't believe that the organization stayed on path. And it's year one of this. This is the first time. we're So we're already moving the needle. We're already moving the goalposts and already getting away from what you – and you were so adamant about it. You were so loud about it. You were so intense about it. I don't care about the standings. I don't care where we are. I don't care about this. I don't care about that. Well, clearly you do because you went out and got an Eric Johnson for a mid-round pick. Once again, that's not going to blow up your franchise. It's less about the actual deals. For example, the, the, the Nick Sealer deal isn't going to murder you with the salary cap in the years, even though four years for a third pair defenseman to me is ludicrous. You're, you're not going to be uh, handcuffed and so strict in other areas because you sign Nick Sealer. It doesn't annihilate you, but I'm more with the thinking process right now. I need to know the thought process of it. And if you're telling me that you're getting an extra piece to try and make a push here, Eric Johnson, veteran, been around for a while, you know, in theory, it's not bad. And my personal opinion side's like, hey, that's better than maybe playing some of the kids that got caught up when they played actually pretty decent against Florida. You let up one goal as a team. Urson with the beautiful save back door makes a toe save with the skate. How electric was that? Phenomenal. You know, you got Jinning, you got Adder. It's nice. You bring in Eric Johnson. Yeah, it's, a, it's definitely more of a better feeling, more of an experienced guy back there. And, uh, but I, I thought you weren't going to allow where you fall to impact that. You say, well, Jamie Drysdale's hurt and Nick Sealer's hurt. I'm, I'm with you. I'm with you. I get it. I do. I'm not naive here. I understand where the standings are currently at. But you, you really did tell the entire fan base that you weren't going to allow for that to change what we're going to do to get this thing back on the rails. Now, what cracks me up with all this is, I guess Flyers fans are just fully a 1,000% back. They just believe everything, everything, which is fine. You're allowed to feel confident. You're allowed to feel excited that you have people in place like Danny Briere who seem to be significantly more intelligent than Chuck Fletcher. Significantly more intelligent than Ron Hextall. But you're telling me there's not a little bit deep down in you that wonders if they got off track already? And when I say got off track, it's not to the point where we are set up for a disaster because they have a lot of first-round picks. They have a lot of high-round draft picks coming up here. And maybe that's enough for you to say, you know what, screw it. If they wanted to add some veteran help, if they wanted to sell when it was obvious in an overpay, but then stay put with others because they respect the guys and what they've done to this point and they feel they're obligated to see if they can make a a playoff run. Because they have first-round picks and second-round picks lined up, 
okay, okay. And I'm a big, big believer in, in hockey. Anything can happen. Now, it's a far shot knowing that Urson just got slid into a number one role and he has to play like Marty Brodor in his prime in a playoff scenario, especially when, you know, your decor is extremely banged up. Ristolainen's not available. I don't know when Jamie Drysdale is going to be there. It's nice to see Konechny back. Him just being on the ice in his presence is beautiful. And when he's skating around the ice, he's buzzing. He's Even if he's accident, I saw one play where he, he accidentally he tried to shoot it, and the puck ended up staying there. Owen oh, Tippett's wide open in the slot. So his presence and his ability to take a wrist shot, take a snapshot, you have two defensemen that are clearly staring right at him as he's in the slot, which then even though he whiffed, now Owen oh, Tippett is available for a prime chance. Just unfortunate Bob Roski made the save at that particular time. His presence changes the whole entire thing, and it's incredible, and I'm just excited to watch him get back on the ice because this team desperately needs as much scoring as humanly possible uh it's it's a it's a very very strange feeling for me very strange feeling for me for sure uh, how do I process the Wade Allison thing they clearly don't believe in him staying healthy they don't think that he has what it takes uh, to help this club at any point down the road. So they take a flyer on a guy who had scoring touch previously in his career, and they said he's going to end up going to Tampa Bay and getting the nod on the NHL team early here to to see what that's all about. Okay, you know, that's fine. Fine, I, I don't have an issue with a flop of a Wade Allison or a flip of a Wade Allison to see if there's something else out there. I like what Wade Allison brought when he was healthy, but, you know, I also feel that you got a not a lot of guys like that, but I always stated over the last few years, there was a mix of young talent that were all battling for that bottom six, that third line role-ish, and, you know, Wade Allison, I think, just fit the mold of, the collection of of young talent that yeah you, you have a bunch of them you just have a bunch of them and, and different skill sets for sure but same line third line bottom six that type of vibe and at some point there's just too many bodies and um, you know it just is what it is for Ray Dallas and I just had at one point some high expectations but when he's constantly getting banged up and he can't stay upright well then something like this eventually has to happen. We're going to take some anytime hotline calls on the trades, on Sean Walker, on everything happening here with the Philadelphia Flyers. So let's run to the anytime hotline and kick things off here. Bro, this is my reaction to the Sean Walker trade and the Nick Sealer extension. Uh, the Sean Walker trade is just such a huge success for this organization. The Ivan Provorov trade made back in the summer changed the outlook of this franchise. You got over two first-round picks, two second-round picks, and other players because Danny B was able to get creative. I loved Sean Walker, um, but he was definitely a piece that a rebuilding team had to move, and I'm very happy with the return that they got. They got creative. They, they ate some salary from Colorado. And now we move on to Nick Sealer, which I know you're not a fan of giving him an extension, but he got four years. $2.7 million on average. I love it. I mean, you bring up that this is a rebuild. I don't know what you're realistically going to get for Nick Sealer. Third He's round just pick. kind of a guy, but you didn't pay him so much money to where the Flyers are going to be screwed. And also, isn't this rebuild supposed to be a process? Isn't it like three years before we get Mitch to come to the unit to come to the U.S.? Um, and over time, you can't just not have any players in your hockey team. That's how you create a losing culture. So getting a guy extended who does all the little things, who fans love and who players love, is a smart move no matter how you look at it. They could have traded Nick Sealer and it would have been okay. But I don't mind the extension that they gave him. So the reason why I don't like it is because it is a very replaceable spot in your lineup. You need to be able to get as much as you possibly can. You you said it yourself, right? Nick Sealer's just a guy. Right. So if Nick Sealer's just a guy, and if you could squeeze a third-round pick for— I'm just saying, if that's a price you can get for just a guy, a third-round pick for just a guy— Oh, my God, yeah. And I keep getting this rebuttal. Well, what are the percentages that a third-round pick ends up being? Look, at that rate, then I'm never allowed to criticize a draft ever because 
There's a lot of fourth rounders, fifth rounders, third rounders, second rounders, first rounders that don't end up working. So that means I can't apply pressure to general managers anymore ever. There used to be a time where I played that card and I, I think that I've sort of transformed a little bit and I started to look at it with a different set of eyes because... I've seen Jake Gensel get taken in the third round. I've seen Adam Fox get taken in the third round. I've seen Chris Letang getting taken in the third round. The list goes on and on. There's a ton of insane talent. Uh, Grizzlick got taken in the third round. There's so much talent out there that your job is to find it. Your job is to find it. And if you can get a swing, if you can get an opportunity and a chance to find it for, quote, just a guy, well, then, yeah. And guess what? If that person ends up being just a guy, well, then it ended up even itself out and you didn't hurt yourself at all. All right? But then if it ends up being a bust, well, whatever. And then you lost just a guy for a crack at something better than what Nick Sealer ends up being. You get emotionally tired. The reason why I have a bigger issue with it is more because it's going against what they preached. It's less about my personal opinion on a rebuild, my personal opinion on this, my personal opinion on that. It's this is what they've been trying to tell you. And then when they get the chance to do it, they didn't do it. At the end of the day, with all the little moves, with this, with Eric Johnson, with that, with Wade Allison, they traded Sean Walker. That's really the big splash of the deadline for the Flyers. They traded a Sean Walker for a first-round pick, which is a solid return, which is an amazing flip. But if I told you, heading into this season, the Flyers were rebuilding, and at the trade deadline, they were overachieving and sold one defenseman, you'd be disappointed. At the end of the day, they traded one defenseman at the deadline. That was their rebuild this year. Do you agree with that rebuild or do you not? Maybe you agree, and that's fine. I believe that that's a little underwhelming based off of... Now, if they went out and said, we're not rebuilding, we're great, we're a great team, I expect to win in the playoffs, I think we're going to be fantastic, and I'm excited to go to war with this team. If that's what John Tortorella said from day one, and then here we are at the deadline, and they don't trade Walker, they add Eric Johnson to help out on the blue line, maybe they try and grab some depth up front with the forward, and, and they do mini nothing crazy, they're not selling the farm for a Jake Gensel or, you know, anything like that. They're not applying nine prospects to go get Gensel. But if they just made some solid, nice moves, but then it actually goes to what they were describing all year. This goes against it. One trade doesn't define it all. The Sean Walker, oh, what do you mean? They're, they're selling. They are. Not really. Because Scott Lawton has been danced around the whole league forever and people are willing to bite and they keep saying no I'm only going to if teams overpay and during a rebuild it's not about if a team overpays or not it's if they pay not underpay not overpay if you're actually rebuilding it's about paying so if it's a fair price they'd say no I was talking to someone who threw out to me before Jake Gensel even got moved and all that. Hey, look out for the Rangers because they like Scott Lawton a lot and they're they're probably going to offer a first-round pick. But the Flyers won't accept that. The Flyers won't accept that. What do you mean they won't accept that? They won't accept that? <laughs> That's ludicrous to me. So it wasn't confirmed if the Rangers did have it on the table or not. Maybe it was not eventually on the table at all. But if they were intrigued and they were willing and they said no to that, I'd be pissed. That's a disgrace. That's pathetic. And you should be angry too if that's the case. If it is the case. I don't know how you see it any other way. I really don't. They're not moving off guys if a realistic price was offered. Well, then you're, you're not really selling off assets then. And that boggles my mind. I like playing hardball. 
But you can't play such hardball. If you were great and you're unwilling to move off guys, well, then, yeah, play hardball. Dude, we'll give up this guy, but we're actually fantastic right now. And we're we're a beautiful hockey team. I'm not going to just get rid of my top six because we're doing well. We're, we're, we're going to be second or first in the Metropolitan. There's no reason to shave off some of our top point producers. You have to overpay to acquire them. That's when you would play the overpay card. But if teams are willing to pay fair prices and you're still declining them, then you're not actually going through with what you said you were going through with. And yeah, I may have PTSD because this franchise hasn't been ran right for so damn long. And maybe I'm applying some of my negative feelings towards this front office. But un- until I'm proven something otherwise, I have to take this approach. That's me personally. Let's take another call here. Uh, hey, Broads. Love the channel. Love watching it. Go Flyers. Go Phillies. Um, yeah, I love the trade by uh, Danny Briere. You trade away Sean Walker. You get a first round. And I'm already reading reports and rumors that, um, that the team has already waived Johansson. So it's possible that we might not even get Johansson on the Flyers and we could trade him for some more picks. Um... Good move by Danny Briere. We're not done yet. This thing ain't over. A lot of optimism out there for the Danny Briere world. And, and I get it. Danny Briere has made – he's made way more tremendous moves than not tremendous moves. Oh, man. Ivan Provorov, deal, everything. There's been so much dealing with Carter Hart, dealing with Cutter Gauthier. The list goes on and on. I mean, he's done a lot of great things. And I lean, if I had to discuss, do I think Danny Briere is going to be a really strong general manager in this league? I absolutely lean towards yes. <laughs> yes. Then no. But it doesn't mean that I have to fully just blindly say, oh, yeah, go Flyers. They nailed this thing. I don't know if they did. I don't know if they did what they set out to do. They got distracted when they made it very clear they were not going to get distracted this year because they've been distracted so many previous years. And, and yeah, it's a different regime. But that's their selling point is we're not going to do what other organization or other people did in this other organization. But then they did. They did. This is that. Just the, Sh- the Sean Walker thing is such an obvious one. Like, obviously, obviously you're going to trade Sean Walker for a first-round pick. Like, obviously. I mean, it's so obvious. It's so obvious. You had to do that. I mean, come on. It was so obvious. Outside of that move, though, when it comes to this, I figured there'd have to be some tough decisions made. Scott Lawton, that's tough. But we're going to do it because we we know what's best for the long run. We know what's best looking for the future. It's tough. It's not easy. These are very difficult decisions. We're sitting around the room. Three guys think it's the right thing to do. Four guys think it's the wrong thing to do. And there's one guy sitting there with all the power in his hands. Danny Briere. Hey, you're the last call here, right? I mean, if you pick one side, it's tie game. But at the end of the day, you're the one that gets to pick it. You're the one with all the power. And and it's, it's split 50-50. But you got to do what's right for the long run. Those type of things. I'm not saying it's an easy close your eyes, walk in the park, snap your fingers, hallelujah, this is the easiest gig in the world. No, it's a tougher conversation to have, but you have to make the right one. And they fell into the trap a bit. And I don't know why it irritates people to bring that up. They fell into the trap. It is what it is. Doesn't mean they're going to be a disaster forever. Doesn't mean no good moves will be made in the offseason. It means this deadline, they fell into the trap when they said they wouldn't fall into the trap. It is what it is. All right, everybody, appreciate your time. Thank you all so much, and we'll be talking very soon. I'll uh, see you on the next one.